Hello and welcome. This video is the right choice to guide you through your divorce proceedings. If you and your spouse have decided to work cooperatively or if your spouse has decided not to participate in the divorce. This video will take you step by step through the process from start to finish with our goal of making a very procedural process as streamlined as possible. We also want to keep you out of the courtroom. Please note that we move through some of the initial documents quite quickly. If you have not yet completed them and would like more specific help, please go to hellodivorce.com to find additional instructional videos and templates. We also offer flat fee services such as legal coaching and document preparation or review at a discount for members like you. Let's get started. First, in order to obtain a divorce in the state of California, one spouse must reside in the county where you want to file for at least three months and the state of California for six months before filing for divorce. Note that for the domestic partnership dissolution, you do not need to meet the same jurisdictional requirements. Initial filing. The first step is to complete the petitions, summons, and if you have children, the declaration under the UCCJEA. You will need to file them all at your local county courthouse, and they will require a filing fee, usually around $435, depending on your county, and unless you qualify for a fee waiver. The petition is the document that tells the court what orders you want to be made in your divorce. If there is any possibility that your divorce or domestic partnership dissolution may become contested, make sure that you request your best case scenario in your petition so that you are not precluded later on from asking for those things. If you don't ask for what you want in the initial petition, you are precluded from receiving it later. Pay close attention to the date of separation. This is the date one or both of you expressed desire to divorce and then demonstrated conduct consistent with the intent to end your marriage. An example would be if you told your spouse in couples counseling that you wanted a divorce and then you moved out or moved into a separate room, filed a divorce petition, and opened a separate bank account. Date of separation is relevant to both property and debt division as well as spousal support. In the petition, you will also need to state why you are asking for a divorce. Irreconcilable differences is the reason in the majority of cases. Also, pay attention to the separate and community property portion. Under separate property, you will want to list anything that you have had before the marriage or acquired after separation or received during the marriage by gift or inheritance. Be as specific as possible, but don't list the entire account number. Last three to four digits is sufficient. Community property. Generally property and debt acquired during the marriage and before separation, except by gift or inheritance to one spouse, unless that property was transmuted later into community property. Usually in that case, there would have been a post-nuptial agreement. Regarding the section about kids, check the boxes for legal and physical custody. Legal refers to decisions related to education, medical, or welfare of your kids. Physical custody refers to where the kids will live. For spousal support, note that if your marriage is more than 10 years and you don't expect your spouse to respond to the petition by filing a response or by signing a divorce judgment or marital settlement agreement, you will need to request that the issue of spousal support be reserved as opposed to waived. UCCJEA. If you and your spouse have children, you need to fill out and file what's called a declaration under UCCJEA. The UCJEA is a law which gives the court the ability to make custody and visitation orders regarding your children, depending on where they live. You will need to disclose all addresses where your children have lived in the past five years. Summons. The final document you will need to complete and file to start your case is called a summons. While it doesn't matter who files the initial documents, it is important to know that the party filing the petition is referred in the court system as the petitioner. The party filing their response 
is referred to as the respondent. Service. Now that the documents have been filed, you will need to serve the other party with copies of the petition, the declaration under the UCCJEA if you have kids, and the summons. You will also need to serve the other party with a blank response document. These documents must be physically handed to the other party by someone over the age of 18 and not involved in the divorce. This person can be a friend, relative, or a professional process server. Once the other party has been given the documents, the person who served the documents needs to complete a proof of service which is also filed with the court. The day that the other party is served is the day upon which the six-month period starts to tick. The court will not grant your divorce before the six-month waiting period. Once the petition, summons, and declaration under UCCJEA have been served, the other party now has 30 days to file a response and also pay a filing fee. If your spouse files a response, you will both need to complete your disclosures. Otherwise, only you need to prepare the disclosure documents. Please watch our do-it-yourself video or review our instructional templates on completing your mandatory financial disclosures. They are very important and need to be done correctly. If you expect that your spouse will not respond or participate in any way in the divorce, complete the following forms and file all but the FL-140. FL-140, Declaration of Disclosures, FL-150, Income and Expense Declaration, FL-141, Declaration regarding Service of Declaration of Disclosure and Income and Expense Declaration, FL-160, Property Declaration, times two since you need one for separate property and one for community property. If your spouse will be filing a response or will not file a response but will be signing and notarizing a divorce agreement, you can prepare the FL-142, Schedule of Assets and Debts, instead of the two FL-160s. FL-142 does not get filed. Request to enter default. The next step is to let the court know you are proceeding without the respondent filing a response and request permission to move forward. On this form, you need to either attach an FL-160 or check the box that coincides with why you haven't. For example, if you intend to submit a signed agreement, a judgment, or you have already filed an FL-160 and it hasn't changed since the last time you filed, you do not need to submit a new one. Bring this to the court with two copies and the clerk will enter the default. Final step, although it's a pretty long one, this is your judgment for dissolution of marriage and or domestic partnership. Once preliminary financial disclosures are served and the declaration regarding service of declaration of disclosure and income and expense declaration, FL-141, and the request to enter default, FL-165, have been filed, a judgment is how the two of you will tell the court what it is you agree to and why you want the court to enter as orders of the court. This is done through a packet of several forms and documents that are compiled together and filed with the court. If your spouse did not file a response and is not participating in the judgment, meaning he or she is not going to work on and sign an agreement, you will prepare these same forms and ensure they mirror your requests in the petition. Judgment form. This is the form that you will use as the cover page for your judgment. You will mark the applicable boxes on the first page. First, that you are asking the court to enter a judgment of dissolution, legal separation, or nullity. For number two, you will mark that this is a default or uncontested action. You don't need to check any other boxes under number two if your case was resolved without a trial. For number three, you will need to enter in the date the court acquired jurisdiction over the respondent which is the date when the respondent was served with the petition, or the date that the respondent appeared, which means the date when the respondent first filed something with the court, whichever happened first. 
For number four, you will want to check box 4A or 4B depending on whether you are getting a divorce or legal separation. If you are getting a divorce, you will also want to check box 4A1, but you will leave the date next to 4A1 blank because the court will fill that in. If either party would like their pre-marriage name restored, you will need to check box 4F and indicate what the former name is. If you and your spouse have children, you will also need to check box 4H and attach the FL-192 form as required. On the second page, you will need to fill in your children's names and birth dates. Then there are a variety of boxes to check and forms to add for each issue. 4J, Child Custody and Visitation. If you have children, check 4J and boxes 1 and 2. You will need to complete and attach the FL-341 Child Custody and Visitation Attachment. At the top of the FL-341 form, mark the box indicating that this form is attached to the judgment. Specify the child's country of habitual residence. In number 3, listing each child's name and birth dates in number five and listing the name of the spouse who will be awarded legal custody and who will be awarded physical custody or list joint. For number seven, fill in the visitation schedule for both parties. If you have it written out in the stipulated judgment, then mark boxes number seven and number seven E4 as follows and write in C paragraph blank in the attached stipulated judgment. Items 9 and 10 refer to the transportation and travel for the children. Fill in the applicable boxes here based on the agreement with the other party, if there is one. Item 11 refers to the holiday schedule. If you and the other parent have worked out an extensive holiday schedule, or if you propose one, check the box. Check below and write in C paragraph blank in the attached stipulated judgment. Alternatively, you can check the box in the attached schedule and complete and attach the FL341C children's holiday schedule attachment. Item 13 deals with joint legal custody. If you and the other party will be sharing joint legal custody of the children, and there are specific agreements regarding joint legal custody, then you will either need to check this box, check below, and write in C paragraph blank in the attached stipulated judgment, or you can check the in the attached schedule box and fill out and attach the FL341E joint legal custody attachment. There are additional child custody and visitation provisions that you'd like to include. You can do so in items 12 and 15. Check any other boxes on this form that apply to your case or that reflect agreements you have reached regarding custody and visitation. Item 4K, Child Support. If you have kids, check 4K and boxes 4K1 and 4K2. You will need to fill out the FL-342 Child Support Order and Attachment Form. On the FL-342, check the box at the top indicating this form is being attached to your judgment. If you and the other party have a DISO Master indicating guideline support, check box 1. If you do not have a DISO Master, check and fill out boxes 2, 3, and 4. Boxes 6A through 6D require you to fill in the amount of child support and other child support related add-ons as agreed between you and the other party. If the amount of child support agreed to is either below or above the guideline amount as calculated in a DISO master, you will need to check box 6E and fill out or attach the FL342A non-guideline child support findings attachment. On the FL342A form, check the box at the top indicating that this is a form that's being attached to your judgment. Check box number one and indicate whether or not the agreed upon child support amount 
is either below or above the guideline disomaster amount. You will also need to fill in the actual guideline amount in item number one and number two A. In item number two A, indicate which spouse would be the one to pay the guideline child support amount. In item two B, indicate whether the child support amount agreed upon is an increase or decrease of guideline child support and indicate what is the revised or agreed upon amount of child support. Under 2C, fill in the appropriate box. Will this non-guideline child support amount continue permanently until someone requests the court to make a different order? Or have you and your spouse agreed that the non-guideline child support amount will be paid until a certain date? You will also need to give the court a reason why the court should allow you to deviate from the guideline amount so check any of the boxes under number 2D4 that apply to your case. Spousal, domestic partner, or family support. Check 4L and boxes 4L3 and 4L4. If you are terminating spousal support to either party, you will need to check box 2 and indicate for which spouse spousal support is being terminated, or check both boxes if spousal support is being terminated for both parties. If you are reserving over spousal support to either party, you will need to check box one. Sometimes parties agree to terminate spousal support payable to one party and reserve it to the other, which is fine too. Just ensure you are marking the correct boxes. You will need to fill out the spousal support attachment. On the FL343 form, check the box at the top indicating that this form is being attached to the judgment. You will need to fill out each party's income and amounts in item 1. Fill out items 3 through 11 according to the agreement between you and the other party. 4M Property Division Check 4M and boxes 1 and 2. You will need to fill out and attach the FL345 Property Division Order Attachment. Check the box at the top indicating that this form is being attached to the judgment. The FL345 lays out the property division that you and the other party have agreed to. It is quite detailed, but you should be able to pull all of the property information from the agreement that you and the other party have entered into. If there are no community assets to be divided between you and the other party, you will check 1A. Check box 1B only if it's applicable. Under box 1C and 1D, you will list each and every asset to be assigned to either party. Ensure to use as much identifying information as possible, but only use the last three digits of each account number listed. If there are retirement accounts to be divided via a Qualified Domestic Relations Order, Quadro, you will need to check box 1E and indicate how the fee for preparation of the Quadro is to be paid. Box 1G should be checked to indicate that the parties are receiving the assets as the sole and separate property and each must cooperate to transfer any and all assets. Box 2A should be checked if there are no community debts to be divided. If all debts have been paid by one party in exchange for a reimbursement from the other, then the boxes in item 2B should be marked accordingly. Under box 2C and 2D, you will list each and every debt to be assigned to either party. Be sure to use as much identifying information as possible and only use the last three digits of each account number listed. Box 3 should be filled out if one party owes the other an equalization payment pursuant to the agreement between you and the other party. Items 4A and 4B should be filled in with the items that each party is retaining as their separate property. Again, be sure to use as much identifying information as possible. Item 5 should be marked and filled in with the number of pages of the agreement that the parties have entered into and that will be attached to the judgment. If the property needs to be sold, item six needs to be filled in with the terms as agreed to between the parties for the sale of such property. 
If there are any other orders pertaining to the property division between the parties, you can include it in item 7. 4N, Attorney's Fees. Check 4N and Box 1. This will refer the court to review the attorney's fees provision included in the settlement agreement. If there is no agreement regarding attorney's fees in the settlement agreement, one may simply write each party to pay their own attorney's fees and costs under item 4N3. You will need to fill out and attach the FL 346 attorney's fees and costs order attachment. On the FL 346 form, check the box at the top indicating that this form is being attached to the judgment. Check boxes 1, 1A, and 1B, or 2, 2A, 2B, or 2C, depending on your specific situation. Complete boxes 4A through 4E, 5, and 6, depending on your agreement. The parties will both need to sign and notarize an agreement or settlement agreement or stipulated judgment that you will then attach the judgment and submit to the court. You don't need to attach an agreement or sign one if you are proceeding by true default, meaning your spouse never filed a response and you are requesting a judgment without his or her participation. The agreement can be a marital settlement agreement or a document entitled Stipulated Judgment Attachment 4. It can restate the agreements you listed in all the attached forms, or it can simply state that you both are requesting that you'd like the court to approve the judgment and grant your divorce. Additional Judgment Forms There are several additional forms that the court requires one to submit at the time of submitting a judgment. Declaration for Default or Uncontested Dissolution, FL 170. This is the form that tells the court that you and the other party are participating in an uncontested divorce. You have come to a full agreement regarding all outstanding issues and you would like the court to make those agreements orders of the court. Stipulation and Waiver of Final Declaration of Disclosure, FL 144. This form tells the court that you and your spouse agree to waive an exchange of the final financial disclosures. If you two agree to this, you will need to sign this form. If you do not agree, you will each need to prepare your final financial disclosure documents and exchange them. The final financial disclosures are just about the same process as the preliminary financial disclosures, but you will need to update all of your information with current information. Appearance Stipulations and Waivers, FL 130. If you and the other party have both appeared in the case by filing a petition and response, mark box 1B. Check boxes 2A through 2E if all of the following apply. A, you both agree that this is an uncontested action. B, you both waive your rights to notice of trial and a statement of decision and the right to appeal. C, you are comfortable with the action being decided by a commissioner instead of a judge. D, you have a written agreement that will be attached to the judgment and submitted to the court. And E, you understand agreements A through D will not apply unless the court approves your agreement, meaning your entire judgment. Notice of Entry of Judgment, FL 190. This is a simple form that requires you to give the court both parties' mailing information at the bottom of this form. Check box number one if the judgment is for divorce, dissolution, and check box number four if the judgment is for legal separation. Once the court approves and enters the judgment, the court clerk will mail this form and the judgment to each party's address as provided on this form. Child Support Case Registry Form This form is required by the court when submitting a judgment which contains orders regarding child support, even if you've agreed to no support. Fill in the required information and file it with the court along with the rest of the judgment documents. 
Errors on any of these forms will cause the court to reject your judgment forms and will delay the final grant of divorce or legal separation. It's therefore advisable to have the forms and agreements reviewed by an attorney at Hello Divorce or ensure you have filled out everything fully and appropriately. Once you feel confident everything is complete, make four copies of the original with both parties' wet ink signatures. The original copies with both parties' wet ink signatures along with two photocopies will be filed with the court, while the remaining two copies are for you and your spouse to keep while the court is reviewing your documents. Double check to see whether you have already filed the proof of service of summons, FL 115, and whether both parties have filed the declaration regarding service of declaration of disclosure, FL 141, if you are submitting the judgment with an agreement. If you have not yet filed these documents, file them simultaneously with your judgment forms. Turn in the original and two copies of the judgment forms along with the proof of service of summons, declaration regarding service of declaration of disclosures, and income and expense declaration, if these have not been filed previously. Turn these in to the court clerk along with two large envelopes, one envelope addressed to each spouse with postage already prepaid. Once you have turned in all of your forms, the clerk will forward all your paperwork to the judge for final approval. If everything is in order, the judge will approve the judgment without the need of a hearing. After the judge signs the order, you will receive the judgment and notice of entry of judgment in the mail, and these forms will have the judge's signatures on them, along with a date stamp indicating the date on which your dissolution of marriage or legal separation was granted. If there is an error in your paperwork, the clerk will return your papers Usually, the clerk will also send you an instruction sheet that outlines exactly what needs to be corrected on the forms before the judge will accept them. You will then need to correct the errors and resubmit the forms. If the forms are returned with a request to schedule a hearing date, it usually means that you and your spouse are asking for something that the judge might need more clarification on before approving it. If you have questions, feel free to schedule an appointment with a Hello Divorce attorney or seek the assistance of another attorney. Once you've completed these steps, you have navigated and survived the process for obtaining an uncontested divorce in California. Whether you are happy about being divorced or not, you should feel relieved that you have handled all the paperwork necessary to be done with the legal process. We wish you all the best going forward.